tonight back to the drawing board. That's the message from the Court of Appeals to a proposed power plant in Superior. Plus, authorities are asking for your help in finding an Eveleth woman and her child. But first, a shooting in Duluth Central Hillside neighborhood has prompted a heavy police presence. The latest on what we know so far. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. Thanks for joining us. Anthony has the night off. Duluth police are investigating a shooting that injured two people. They say it happened just before 3 o'clock this afternoon on the 100 block of Harbor Highlands Drive in the Central Hillside neighborhood. That's where we find CBS 3's Ryan Combo. Ryan, what do we know at this point? Yeah, Kristen, it's a lot of unanswered questions. We're obviously right here on scene behind me. Cop Police cars, excuse me, have come and gone since we arrived on scene. The Duluth crime scene just walked into one of the homes here to try to see what exactly went on. We're at the corner here of Village View Drive and Harbor Highlands Drive, where we have a lot of unanswered questions, including the extent of the injuries and to if those two even knew one another. But what we do know at this moment is the injuries those two suffered are non-life threatening and that they are being treated at a local hospital. Police blocked off several roads during the investigation, including the entrance into Harbor Highlands area off Central Entrance. There are a number of law enforcement vehicles on scene earlier this afternoon, including an ambulance and a fire truck. Again, we know very few details at this hour. Police were unable to confirm the names of the two people injured and if they are still looking for any suspects or what might have led to this incident. Now, obviously, Kristen, this is an ongoing investigation and they are still inside the home here over on Harbor Highlands Drive. But when we know more, we will update you on air and online at CBS3.com. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Well, meanwhile, St. Luke's Hospital spokespeople say that shooting led to their emergency department being put on lockdown this afternoon. Hospital spokespeople could not confirm the exact circumstances. They did say the lockdown lasted for about 15 to 30 minutes and was lifted around 4 o'clock this afternoon. The building is located on the 900 block of 1st Street in downtown Duluth. Hospital officials say they don't believe anyone was in danger during the lockdown. Eveleth police are looking for a missing woman and her baby, 27-year-old Taylor Laurel Toulouse and her nine-month-old daughter, Delphine French, were last seen a week ago. Police first started investigating after a friend of Taylor's called them on Friday. Police were not able to share any specific circumstances surrounding their disappearance, but they say at this point they don't believe they're in any trouble. At this point, we feel that there's certain information that um, leads us to believe she left on her own will. Um, but again, because of the age of the child, um, we just want to make sure that their welfare is okay. If you have any information on Taylor and Delphine's whereabouts, you're asked to call Eveleth Police Department. That number is on your screen there, or you can call 911. We also have these numbers listed on our website, cbs3duluth.com. Still no word on what caused a fire at a Hermantown business last night. Fire crews were called to Hermantown Mill Work on the 5100 block of Miller Trunk Highway around 5 o'clock. They were on scene for at least a couple of hours. No word how much damage was done. A Bemidji woman died when a coach bus ran a red light. The Minnesota State Patrol says the crash happened around 12.30 Friday afternoon in Bemidji. That's when the coach bus reportedly ran the red light on Highway 2 and T-boned Francine Harem's vehicle. The 61-year-old died from her injuries. It's unclear if charges will be filed or who the 48-year-old coach bus driver worked for. Minnesota's Senate Minority Leader was hospitalized last week after collapsing during an event on the Iron Range. According to the Mesabi Daily Press, after addressing the crowd in Mountain Iron, State Senator Tom Bach fell while walking back to his table. He quickly stood up and later left the room without support. In an email, Bach said there was no lingering health issue that caused the collapse, just a dizzy spell caused by dehydration. The Democrat represents parts of Cook, Lake, St. Louis, and Cuchiching counties at the state capitol. State Senator Susan Kent of Woodbury recently announced she plans to challenge Bach in the upcoming election.
Let's check in with Dave for a quick look at the weather. Dave, we are uh, one day before Christmas Eve here. I know a lot of folks planning to travel mm -hmm. around the holiday, holiday season. How's the weather going to be? A lot of guys like me getting ready to start their holiday shopping tomorrow morning around ah, 10 or 11 a.m. <laughs> and so there will be a lot of people on the streets yeah. and the roads. I don't think it'll be too bad, though a low-pressure system looms to our south. That's going to try to shake things up for us just a little bit. Higher pressure to the north, though, is trying to keep it at bay. So by splitting the difference, I think we're going to indeed get a mostly cloudy sky, but a chance for a rain-snow mix is more iffy. So looking at the forecast for tomorrow, our day planner for Christmas Eve day says there's a 20 to 30 percent chance for this rain and snow mix in the morning hours. Then in the afternoon, mostly cloudy but dry and a high of 34. That's warmer than normal still. We'll talk about how long this warm spell is going to linger coming up in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Dave. With the new year approaching, ships are making their final stops for the season. The first ship to make its way into the Twin Ports for winter layup is the John J. Boland. The ship is in dry, do dry dock at Fraser Shipyards. Those with the Duluth Seaway Port Authority say the 2019 shipping season was a successful one, and the Twin Ports remain one of the busiest on the Great Lakes chain. Port Authority officials say they hope to exceed 35 million short tons for the third consecutive year. This season, the Port of Duluth Superior was awarded the Pace Setter Award as well, which is indicative of increases in salty tonnage, ocean going tonnage through the seaway. So each year when there's a, a, an uptick, when you, when you gain on the year, previous year, you win the, win the Pace Setter Award. The last salty of the year left the Twin Ports around 1 o'clock Sunday morning. It's bringing Durham wheat to Italy. It was one day off from tying the record for the latest salty departure, which was on December 23rd of 1984. The oldest gray wolf at Isle Royal National Park has died. Researchers say the 12-year-old male was apparently killed by wolves recently relocated to the Lake Superior Island chain. Officials decided to relocate wolves from the U.S. and Canada to help rebuild the dwindling population. The wolf's body was found in October. A necropsy showed it had been attacked by fellow wolves. A big step toward limiting a deadly brain disease in Minnesota deer. The state's DNR announced it has temporarily banned farmers from moving all farmed white-tailed deer within the state. This comes after researchers discovered chronic wasting disease in a captive deer at a hobby farm in Douglas County, which is in west central Minnesota. The emergency rule will be in effect for 30 days. The DNR says the farm has connections to other Minnesota deer farms, so it needs time to investigate farms that either provided deer to or received deer from that hobby farm. The future of a proposed energy center in Superior is up in the air. Today, the Minnesota Court of Appeals ruled that plans for Minnesota Power's Namaji Trail Energy Center will be put on hold. That's until a state agency takes a look at whether or not it would have significant environmental impacts. CBS 3's John Cardinelli heard from both sides on that decision today. John. Kristen, this morning's decision by the Court of Appeals is actually a reversal of the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission's original decision to approve the project. The Namaji Trail Energy Center would generate hundreds of megawatts of power, which would be shared between Minnesota Power and Wisconsin's Dairyland Power Cooperative. In October, the MPUC approved plans for the $700 million natural gas plant to be built in Superior. After that decision, environmental groups appealed, claiming that the facility would contribute to climate pollution. This morning, the Court of Appeals reversed the original decision, saying that the MPUC must conduct an environmental assessment worksheet for the proposed energy center. One environmental group that helped file the appeal is happy with the court's decision. This court decision is a victory for Minnesota Power customers especially, and then also everyone who is concerned about air and water pollution in our area. Um, $350 million is a lot of money to spend on old and dirty technology. So we think this is a great opportunity to look at alternatives that won't lock in uh, decades of pollution for our area. Minnesota Power also weighed in on the decision. Minnesota Power will be doing a similar activity and reviewing the decision, the aspects of the Court of Appeals, and deciding whether or not we will take it to the, court, the Supreme Court as well. Minnesota Power says Wisconsin regulators are also reviewing the project. Both states are reviewing the project because a judge ruled that the project is also a subject to Minnesota state laws. Thanks, John. 
Today is the last day to enroll in health insurance coverage through Minsure for next year. If you need help with enrollment, there will be extended call center hours through midnight tonight. This deadline does not apply to medical assistance or Minnesota care recipients. It also doesn't apply to members of federally recognized Indian tribes. A grant is helping the Ashland School District give elementary school students a new meaning to eat your fruits and veggies. CBS 3's Emma Quinn shares with us what the Fruits and Vegetables Program is. Emma. The Fresh Fruit and Vegetables Program is money granted from the Wisconsin Department of Instruction. The federally reimbursed program provides students a free fruit and vegetable snack several days a week, in addition to snacks provided during breakfast and lunch. This year, it's the first time the Ashland K-5 schools and the Marengo School were both chosen for the program. Between the four schools, they received $39,000. Schools are picked based off of student population and how many families qualify for free and reduced lunches. The elementary school received enough funding to feed every child in the elementary school. Amanda Tudor, the food services director for the district, says it not only keeps the students healthy, but is a learning opportunity. This is a way for them to have a little more exposure to, to items that are in the store. Um, and then we also try and do local foods, and so we try and expose them to like things that are grown up here in northern Wisconsin that they might not, you know, be able to see or afford. Or... Tudor adds the program helps families because it gives students at least three square meals while at school each week. And the school has noticed students are more focused when in the classroom due to not being hungry. And coming up tonight, we will hear from one of those students. We'll send it back to you guys. Thanks, Emma. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, the border battle between the Vikings and the Packers gets personal. For one local family, we'll introduce you to a sibling rivalry that started with football after the break. Today was 11 degrees warmer than normal. It'll probably stay that way for a few more days, warm enough where any precip we get could come around in the form of a rain-snow mix. Slight chance tonight, slight chance tomorrow. How will things fare the rest of the week? Show you the seven day coming up after our break. For four days only at Home Furniture, everything is on sale. Plus, year end clearance bonus buys like this two piece modular sectional mount, just $9.99. Plus, get free shipping and zero interest financing for five years. Home's four day sale. Introducing the completely reimagined 2020 Ford Explorer. With seven terrain management drive modes, it's perfect for families who like to go all out for the holidays. Or throw cranberry sauce on a plate and call it a day. Ford Explorer, America's all-time best-selling SUV. Built for the holidays. During the Ford Built for the Holidays event, get over 6800 in total savings on the all-new 2020 Explorer. Only at your Northland Ford dealers. All of us at Super One Foods would like to say thank you. Thank you for shopping with us here each and every day and making it a joy to come to work. You've allowed us to give back to the local communities we serve for the past 40 years. Each year, we raise and donate hundreds of thousands of dollars in support to local charities and food shelves, youth organizations, and various athletic events. From all of us at Super One Foods, thank you. We're proud to serve you locally every day with low prices and better choices. bringing families together. This time of year, that's really important. That's why our Chevy employee discount is now available to everyone. The Chevy price you pay is what we pay. Not a cent more. Family is important to us. So happy holidays. And welcome to the family. The Chevy family. Use your Chevy employee discount for everyone to get a total value of over $11,800 on this Silverado All-Star. Visit truenorthchevydealers.com. Home Sleep Express has gone purple. Now you can test and buy a famous purple mattress at Home Sleep Express. Sleep cooler and more comfortable on the mattress that broke the internet. And get free delivery, set up, plus no interest financing. The famous purple mattress, now at Home Sleep Express. Are you ready for music's biggest night? Be there live. Ooh, the nerves are so bad. For the first ever. Will you please exchange rings? But can't believe it. Let's go! 
drops. And the completely... Are you kidding me? Can we please start it again? I'm sorry, I can't mess this up. The Grammy Awards. The best night ever! Unexpect Everything. Live January 26th on CBS. Now, the CBS3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Even when the sky above is gray, there's still beauty to be seen around our region. Here's the scene over the lake this morning, caught by Heather Moe. She's an Ely native as well, but this is the Twin Ports. Gorgeous colors, but that old adage, you know, red sky in the morning, sailor take warning, does hold true. We do have a slight chance for a rain-snow mix later tonight that could last through the morning hours tomorrow. And even though it may not add up to much, it may slick up the roadway, so we'll have to be a little bit cautious. Let's take a cautious approach now towards the airport in Duluth and see what's happening current condition-wise. It's 28 degrees. So that's warmer than normal still. Relative humidity is 81%, and that's a bit humid and juicy. Easterly winds going 15 miles per hour probably will slow down a little bit here in the next couple of hours, more towards the range of 5 to 10. Barometric pressure, like the past few days, high on the surface and lower up aloft because of a low pressure system to our south that's increasing the clouds. Temperature-wise, yeah, we've increased over the past couple of days. The cold snap is gone. 27s from Waters Meat to Ironwood, uh, 29 in Ashland, and 30 for Hayward, Solon Springs as well. Then we increased to 32 in Superior, dropped to 30 for Moose Lake and Barnum, but that's not so bad. 28 Hermantown Proctor, 20 Hibbing, a little warmer towards Grand Rapids, a little bit cooler towards International Falls in the teens, and then 20s along the North Shore. This warm spell likely will be with us for the rest of the week. Even though by the week we may drop into the 20s, that's still warmer than the normal of about 24 hour area. Taking a look now at the local scene with the Doppler and the satellite map here, we've got a higher pressure cell to our north and then there's a low tracking down towards our south. The high is trying to keep the low at bay and so by splitting the difference we get the cloudy sky in our region and not really seeing any precip right now. The chance is there though through tomorrow morning for at least a little bit, 30% chance at best, till about noon or so from the load that's tracking along the southern border here of Minnesota and the northern border of Iowa. Now there's another low pressure system coming our way, so we're going to keep a hold of the cloudy sky for tomorrow Christmas Eve and Wednesday Christmas Day when there'll be another chance for rain, snow mix about 30%. Into Thursday then, this low pressure system comes to call, keeps the clouds going yet again, but bumps up the precip chance to maybe 50, 60% and shifts things over to straight up snow. But according to the latest models, it doesn't look like much should accumulate. But if it changes, we'll keep track in the system, we'll let you know. All right, tonight, forecast wise in Minnesota, the low temps go from 19 above inland to maybe 29 by the lake with a mostly cloudy sky. And for Wisconsin and the UP, it'll be mostly cloudy as well with low temps there, lower 20s to maybe even the mid 20s. Tomorrow, Minnesota high temps, we'll show you those in a bit, but Wisconsin, Michigan gets into mid to upper 30s with that morning mix chance. Morning mix chance as well in Minnesota with high temps there, 32 to 36. And now with the extended forecast, yeah, the warm spell lasts all the way through next Monday. Uh, roughly the range this week is 25 to 35 degrees, cloudy through Friday, precip chances through Thursday, then the weekend when a lot of folks might have new Christmas presents to play with outdoors could be a perfect time period for that with a clear to partly cloudy sky and temps above zero. Sounds wonderful. Thanks, Dave. We're, we are just a few hours from the final Packers and Vikings matchup of 2019, and a lot is on the line for both teams. But there might be even more at stake for a pair of Duluth brothers. CBS 3's Ryan Campo tells us more about this unique bond between brothers. Go Vikings! Go Packers! People will gather around televisions all over Wisconsin and Minnesota, screaming their team to victory. And for two Duluth brothers, this rivalry also means bragging rights in the house. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's kind of, I mean, everybody's room is different, you know, because purple and green and yellow and different colors. <laughs> For Luke and Josh Johnson, living under the same roof during the football season can be difficult at times. That's because Luke is a Packers fan, while Josh is all about the purple and gold. Not only are the two brothers divided, but it is also a family divided for the big game. Me and my mom are more of the Vikings fans, but my dad and him are, well, he's changing my dad. They might be rivals, but when watching the game, it isn't as intense as you might think. Oh, it's kind of casual. Now, regardless of the outcome of the game, both say they will enjoy the time they get to spend with their family. 
I like how he says, he's my brother's changing my dad. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the, the spouse is the real one. I wonder yeah. how many, you know, arguments in that. I'm no, just kidding. It's a <laughs> typical thing around <laughs> yeah, this area, right? It's a very common thing, that's right. <laughs> So well, obviously that's what everyone's talking about tonight. That's right. That we, we're going to continue our coverage of tonight's big game. We hear from both sides, and that's coming up right after the break. The 2020 Yamaha XTR Editions at RJ Sport & Cycle. CBS3 Live Cams are brought to you by Kohler Toyota. New state-of-the-art dealership. Same President's Award-winning service. KohlerToyota.com. One has like three. Okay, I can take one. Thank you. I have a When you share the love, you change lives. Over 2,200 wishes granted, more than 57,000 pets supported, over 100 national parks protected, over 2 million meals provided. Through the Subaru Share the Love event, Subaru will have proudly donated over $170 million to national and hometown charities over 12 years. Visit Miller Hill Subaru today during the Subaru Share the Love event, going on now through January 2nd. Visit us online at MillerHill.com. For New Year's Eve only, join the DSSO in the ultimate Rocky Horror Picture Show experience, live and in concert. Visit DSSO.com for tickets. I had gone 20 years essentially without smiling. My dental phobia was, was strong. And the idea of coming in uh, and being able to sleep through the whole thing, that's heaven. That right there is heaven. In terms of an experience, I promise you, it will be the, the easiest dental experience you've ever had. Never be afraid at the dental office again. Call us today for a free sedation consultation. Homespun Tours has cash back for you. Hmm. What am I going, going to, to do, do with, with all this money? money? You can get up to 8% cash back when you book a Homespun Tour. The money is yours. Stuff yourself, stuff your mattress, or stuff whatever. Let's call Homespun Tours and book another trip. America's most watched network. Tonight, starting at 7, only on CBS 3 Duluth. Then, stay tuned for CBS 3 News at 10. All eyes will be on quarterback Kirk Cousins when the Packers and Vikings clash tonight. Cousins will be trying to get the monkey off his back as he has never won a game on Monday night. Even more of a pressing issue for Cousins and the team. They will be without top running back Delvin Cook, who's dealing with a shoulder issue. It'll be the first game Cook has missed this season. Cousins says it'll be a similar challenge to win star receiver Adam Thielen missed time earlier this season. It certainly helps when you feel you can you can win a variety of ways. I think getting Adam back reminded me that uh, uh, when we didn't have Adam and we were still able to move the football and win football games, uh, I think it is a um, uh, reminds you that there are other ways to win and and you can be creative and you can do things a different way and reinvent yourself. And I think um, it's a similar challenge uh, if if we don't have Dalvin. On the Packers' side of things, the game will be an opportunity to wrap up the NFC North division for the first time in three years, which feels weird for Packers fans after they were so dominant in the first half of the decade. The Packers are relatively healthy coming into the game, but will be tasked with slowing down one of the premier pass rushers in the league, Pro Bowler Daniil Hunter. 
The youngest ever player to 50 sacks, the Packers will counter with another pro bowler, tackle David Bakhtiari, a matchup that head coach Matt LaFleur has his eye on. You got to make decisions based on what you think is best in order to attack the defense. And yeah, I've definitely been on sides where you've got somebody on one side where you know you have to slide a certain way every every snap or, or you're going to have some issues or you're going to have to chip or do something to us to, to one side of the of that line and it totally limits you in what you can do and since it's the season of giving the reigning mvp Giannis antetokounmpo is in the holiday spirit following last night's win over the indiana pacers Giannis gave his shoes to a very special young fan and the reaction is pri priceless tears of joy Giannis would later pose for a picture with the young fan. It's been a special year so far for the Bucks and their fans. The team is currently first in the Eastern Conference with a 27 to 4 record. Oh. So, you know, a good momentum to take memento to take home for her, but I, I don't think she'll be fitting in those size 17 <laughs> shoes. If that, they're probably even bigger than that. But they look yeah. like they were half the size of her. <laughs> <laughs> that was adorable. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. Well, stop us if this sounds familiar, but Another Minnesota store just sold a million dollar lottery ticket. I, I feel like Not I need me. to start playing. I know. Me, For those of you keeping track at home, that's three million dollar tickets in just the last week. The most recent was sold at a convenience store in Big Lake, which is about a half an hour southeast of St. Cloud. If you want to check out those winning numbers, we have them listed on our website, cbs3theloop.com. Now, this comes after a $1.6 million ticket was sold in Hermantown last Sunday. Another million dollar ticket was sold in Mankato last Wednesday. But get this, as of this morning, no one has claimed any of those prizes so makes sense if you buy the ticket lawyer up and uh, go down to don't, see the don't, don't, don't tell anyone that's don't tell true. anyone that's, i think that's good advice if the government gets half of it anyway so <laughs> that's the rush all right dave uh how's the weather looking for us here a little bit gloomy for a couple yeah. of days but not really nasty like we saw that picture from heather moe earlier with the beautiful sunrise there now we're looking at a cloudier sky through tuesday wednesday and thursday yes even friday as well 30% chance for a rain-snow mix tomorrow morning, and then on Christmas Day we could get another one through more of the day, and then it becomes a 50% chance for what looks like light snow right now come Thursday. Into the weekend, though, that's the time to really get out and enjoy. If you get a sled or some skis or a beal, Saturday, Sunday, clear to partly cloudy, high temps in the 20s, overnight low temps above zero. We won't freeze to death this time around. <laughs> we cannot complain about that. Above zero. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you back here at 10.